All right, on this video, we're gonna install a US car tool, stage two frame stiffening kit for an E-body, uh, 70 to 74, that's Challengers and Cudas. Um, the owner bought a stage three, I don't think we're gonna install all of it. I might do the mini tubs on this video or we might do it on the next one to see how it goes. But uh, right now we're definitely gonna do the stage two. This is the stage two kit laid out. What we have, we have the subframes. Um, I'll show you, we're gonna have to grind these down to make them fit right. But these are gonna go from the rear frame rails up under the car um, to the front. That's the right and left, we got them. We also have these torque box mounts. Um, they're gonna go back here by the leaf spring. They fit in there in the pocket and they're gonna stiffen uh, where the leaf spring is. This car is also getting a spring relocation kit. Um, I don't believe I'm doing that portion of it. Um, if I do for some reason, we'll show it on the video. These two parts are gonna be the front subframe, uh, front um, torque boxes. They're gonna go right around here on both sides. So we're we'll going into detail how all this goes. We're just showing you what we got going on here. Um, this area is going to be for the front uh, cowl and the front apron area. And basically, that's the wrong side. They're going to get weld up all in this strength in that area. You got some side pieces right here that's going to support them. And then you have the cowl braces that are going to go right along let me I should have prepared this video a little better but that was right the first time so the cow braces we're going to again have to do some modification but they're going to fit somewhat like that that's going to stiffen this area and then that bracket will bring it right down to the front suspension basically tying this whole car together and then we're going to finally wrap it up with the front this is the um, radiator support it's a two-piece Got these two pieces, and I, I talked to the owner. You could do this two ways. I did this in another previous YouTube video on a, a Barracuda, how we cut out this whole front rear support. After talking to the owner on this one, we're actually gonna just slightly modify it and basically put this piece over it. Um, he kind of wants it that way. So we're gonna do that, and that should wrap up this whole kit. Um, as you saw in the last video, I installed a new uh, floor pan. That's gonna make things a lot easier for these subframes, just something solid to weld to. So make sure you got a good area to weld to. Make sure your car's also not jacked up. I, you see, I got the car with the front and rear tires basically at ride level and where it naturally wants to be. I think that's the way to install these kits where you're not forcing the car in jack stands or there's a big motor in it that's gonna bend the car because once you weld all this in place, it's not moving. So stay tuned um, and hopefully you learn something from it. Thanks. This is the first install of the subframe connectors. I'm taking a marker and I'm marking all the high spots. Um, you're gonna have to test fit these things and cut them. Um, you'll see here, we're taking the plasma cutter and I'm taking off the really high spots. You know, just it's easier for me this way. But then I've been stepping it down to a cutoff wheel, grinding wheel. I mean, you can go straight to the grinding wheel if that's what you want. We install some weld through primer and here we are, we're putting the actual subframe connector after like seven times, eight times trying this thing on and off and grinding it. Um, it now fits with almost no gap, um, a whole lot easier to weld. The final product's going to look a lot better and then when you're jacking it up, the car is on the spring so it's taking some load off of it but you're not putting any pressure on one in particular area of the floor pan worried about bending it up and here we are um, the first thing I do I just put a bunch of tacks on this thing um, every inch two inches uh, you don't want to start welding and start having the floor walk up and down so these tacks are going to ensure that this subframes in place it's held together and you know I've talked to people about doing these on rotisseries and everything else um, if you're going to do it on the rotisserie and weld it on there, you could probably tack it up like this and get everything where it's holding good and then do your finished weld on the rotisserie. I know welding upside down, it really sucks. You're going to get burnt here. Um, I mean, I probably should be wearing some more safety gear, at least gloves and all that, but um, anytime you're on the back welding, it makes it a little more challenging. But here we are, we did the passenger side first and the driver's side and just tacking right along.
And then here's a couple of shots of all the subframe connectors tacked into place. And then that's the passenger side tacked into place. Everything fitting really nice. And then a shot down the, from the front down to the back. All right, so we're gonna put the uh, rear torque boxes on the car. I had to trim them up a lot. Um, you can see, I guess they're made for, you know, generic cars, so it's better to have too much. But this corner right here was cut down a whole bunch along this edge, and there was a piece that wrapped around. I'm assuming, I didn't read the directions, but I'm assuming if you don't have these main subframes I installed, that you can use that piece. But these are gonna go right up in here. I said they're all pre-fit. I got them where they're ready to pretty much weld in. We'll clamp them and then all the weld through primers on them and everything, but they fit in just like this. All we're gonna do right now is tack them. So we wanna get it clamped good enough. I'm actually gonna take the jack, you'll see, and we're gonna kind of push up on it while we with the jack to help us along, make sure we get a good tight fit. But you can already see, actually this one's so tight, we don't even need the jack. So we got a good fitting edge there. Just check all your edges, all your gaps, kind of weld once. I'm gonna get a hammer because we're gonna push this corner up too a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna tack up in this area first where we know it's good around that side. And then we'll get a hammer and try to hammer that corner up. Um, I might go back and hammer it, but We'll see, let's, let's weld this up first. All right, that one's all tapped in place. We're gonna go back to that one with the hammer a little bit later, but you see the only thing I'm gonna do is tap this corner right here up just a little bit. Um, I just want a better flush, but you see this fits in. You could still access the leaf spring. That's the key to this. And uh, I just cut it flush. So I just run a bead around the outside to finish that up and that one will be done. So onto the front now. So here's the front torque box. Um, you got these two right here, these two lip things it's going to go all the way up here and they're going to match where your fender bolts are so basically the curve goes towards the front and then on this one i had to trim both of these edges it stuck about an inch i like to set it up right flush with this frame rail and you see this one's going to need a little bit of a um we're going to have to kind of push it a little bit up because you see this corner is coming down so what we're going to do first if it's good everywhere else actually i'm going to just hold it and i'm going to tack it up here and we're going to tack it there and then we're going to try to push up with the jack with this one and a two by four to kind of just make it go where we want to go so That's that, how that torque box goes. So let's work our way to the other side. And uh, as you can see, I also welded in, uh, fully welded in the bottom of the uh, main frame, uh, subframe uh, rails. They're, uh, they're done. I got to clean up the welds a little bit on the bottom. Um, it's one of those things, again, kind of welding. Welding upside down is not the easiest thing to do, but they came out all right for what they are. It was a lot easier on a brand new floor to weld up. Um, I got good penetration. The car was solid. Um, it's, you know, I, I, hopefully you never have to cut them off because I don't think they're, uh, you pretty much have to do the whole floor, it looks like at this point. So hopefully the owner takes care of them and this job will last quite a while. There was a bracket right here that to hold the um, brake line up. I'm gonna give it back to the owner, but that bracket is not usable anymore for obvious reasons. So this one's gonna go in the same way as that other one. Just gonna clamp it. 
and, and same thing this one had to be ground down a whole bunch um, and all that just to get it to fit so yeah it looks like this one I just jump right in place it snapped into place so and access to springs it's straight right there we're gonna attack this area and then we're gonna push up on that after we're done we'll tack around Same thing over here. This one, I got the e-brake here, but you see it's gonna go in the same way. In between the two fender brackets. It's a tight fit, which is good. There we go. And just Get right up in there. All right. Go ahead and I think I'm going to do this bottom corner first. That's going to be the easiest thing for me. Actually, right here, this gap, I'm going to try to tap the floor down just a little bit. Um, instead of going up with this, I think I got some play in the floor up there where you won't even notice it. Just change the arc a little bit, so that will help that one out. And I'm going to just do this corner again, just like we did the other one. All right, before we spend too much time on this, that's how all four of those pieces go in. The front and rear torque boxes on the subframe install. And really, you could do one quick look over the, the center um, subframes, how they're welded up and they fit really good. So that's how the whole undercar is gonna go. We'll put some pictures on here, but that's what it is. Here's a couple shots of the front uh, torque box connectors welded in. This would be the driver's side rear torque box welded into place. Um, here's again the subframes where they're welded in completely and cleaned up on the bottom and another shot. All right, so we got this whole area cleaned up and primed out. So now what we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna put uh, the part of the subframe kit that stiffens this area right here before we put um, this area from the cow panel to the front uh, suspension. Um, I have the wheels off, I have it jacked up down there. However, we're gonna go back and put the wheels on before we put this piece on. Now, I cut these pieces off because I had to do a bunch of cow panel repair on both sides. You could leave them on, it doesn't affect it and put them over it, but as far as we're concerned, what we're putting on is gonna be a lot stronger, so this is junk. So. I ground all these pieces down, I made them fit good, and the goal is to try to weld this piece and the front piece at once. So uh, we're gonna see if it works out. We'll go ahead and tack these on though now. Um, you see the fitment there is really good. Um, we'll just tack it in the back. Gonna turn up my welder heat a little bit. So that piece is on there. Uh, second piece, this is gonna go in the back. It's got a lip there. We don't need this lip because that lip will went over that bracket that um, I cut out. So same thing. I put a little gap in there so when I weld this corner up. When this other piece comes on, I'm going to try to weld both at the same time, all three pieces. I think it's going to look a little cleaner that way. And you can 
can see I, I trimmed all this stuff up to make it a little bit cleaner. Last piece, it only goes on one way. You kind of see what I'm trying to do here. So that's the gap. I'm gonna, after I finish packing this in, we're gonna hammer this edge in a little bit to just let it match. So I'm gonna weld the two parts that I know it's already touching. And you can kind of see what I'm going to do. I'm going to just run the bead right down this edge right here, filling all three of those and making kind of a smooth transition. And the same thing on this side. That's exactly what I did over here. Let's go do the other side real quick. Same thing. So here we are. We're welding on the passenger side now. We're test fitting into pieces, same thing, just making sure our gaps look really good. Just a couple tacks, just in case something's gotta be removed again. I wanna get everything on first, at least on this part. And you see I left that gap there to weld up like I was talking on the other side. Here's the final weld, all done. Um, I decided to go through and clean it up. You'll see in a second, this is on the driver's side. Um, the weld right down there and this is with them cleaned up I just think it's gonna look better when it's all said and done and painted after that And here we are we're test fitting the front subframe um, Part of the kit. I'm just using a hammer. We have the wheels back on the car. The car is sitting at ride height um, naturally where it wants to go and you see when I put this on there I'm not forcing anything at this point I'm getting it all tacked in everything fit really good I use a cutoff wheel and a grinder just like I did on the bottom subframe kits just to trim it up and make sure all my gaps are really good and the welds are gonna come out a lot better that way the only spot that I had trouble was right here and after it was all said and done I used a Porta Power frame machine basically and it all it did was unload the suspension but I pushed it up you see there about a quarter inch and we just were able to tack that last piece it was just overhanging and the same thing on this side it, the gap there was just too much um, it was an easy fix it's not going to hurt anything on the car the cars this whole piece is already tacked in where it needs to go now I'm doing the radiator support and what I did, I tacked this back section of the new radiator support in there to support the frame of the car. And I left the new, the old radiator support in place. And then here we are cutting out the radiator support. The owner, after talk with him, we decided that this is probably gonna be a cleaner look. Um, I was kind of pushing this more and more, so I'm kind of happy we went with this. And then looking at it done now, I think that was the right decision. But like I said, the back of the new radiator support piece is tacked in, and you see it was coming out there. So that's holding the car in its place, and it gives me a guide when I go put the front section on there. And then I basically ground off everything right there, and I put it flush against the frame rails to thing fit perfect. This is one piece I didn't have to actually modify at all. It, it, it fit in there real good you know I mean a little tapping on the ends but it seemed center up the bolt holes lined up um, and you know like I said I just helped it with the block just to kind of push it up just a little bit and I here I am I'm welding the edges first and then I'm going back through now and I'm gonna tack the whole edge in place just make sure I got a good gap between the front and the rear before the welding of it Here's some pictures of it all welded up and actually cleaned up at this point. So here's the radar support. Um, those are our um, subfront subframe areas all done up. I smoothed down the edges too. I think it just looks a lot cleaner again um, versus just seeing the weld. This is going to be more of a street strip car so I don't think it's the end of the world. But still I like to make my metal work um, just you know where it almost you, you barely need any filler or anything just to make it perfect. Right there is where I left all my weld on the radiator support. Um, here's another shot of how it's welded up to the frame. And then this is the um, passenger side front um, apron to cow panel bracket. We got the chassis stiffening kit complete. We'll do a quick walk around just to go over everything we got. 
Um, I cleaned up the well just because the fenders and everything go bolt on there and I didn't want to have anything in the way and I just think the welds clean up will look a little better. Um, we still have to sandblast the engine bay but um, I think for this most part everything's cleaned up. I got all the welds that are penetrating through the engine bay cleaned up. These brackets are done. Um, again all that's going to be probably sandblasted so we're kind of at a point right now where we're just in limbo. I did a bunch of cow upper cow panel patches but you can see I also you're going to have to clean up this area and actually that's all cleaned up mostly because all they were rotted out um, so we made patches there but um, for the most part everything's in bare metal if you're worried about and you want this thing to be show quality there's a couple little divots and pit holes from the weld I'll go through it with some um, um, a glazing putty but besides that I mean it's pretty good for the bare metal work. We got this side all done. Same thing, welded up. All the welds cleaned up. Um, you know, it's again just ready for some primer jobs done. Underneath, everything fit really good. Um, same thing with the brackets going down to the front uh, shock towers. And then the last piece we did was the radiator support. I welded on the inside of this, and I'm going to leave that weld untouched. Um, I think. That's going to be the best way to hold its structure and rigidity. And I also double welded the backside, and then that enabled me when I ground to roll the corner and not worry about taking off too much material, knowing there's an inside weld. And it just looks cleaner. So that part's done. The, car, the stage two chassis stiffening kit's done. Um, we're going to move on to putting mini tubs in this car next which is kind of part of this kit but we're going to do that part separate so stay tuned we'll get the rear axle under the car out of the under the car we'll get the wheels off of it and uh we'll see what that entails so like subscribe and uh thank you for watching